Hey there, tech fans. Rick here from the ORI team with a brief overview of the EX500IR HDMI extension kit. This product was designed to provide a very easy way of extending an HDMI signal up to 150 meters over a standard CAT5E or CAT6 cable. It's really the perfect way of sharing media content from one room in your home with some other location in the house. Now, as part of this overview, I'd like to start with an unboxing of the product just to show you what components come as part of the kit. Then we'll take a closer look at those components and I'll explain what the connections do. Then finally, I'll come back and show you what connections you need to make to get this working in your own home with your own gear. Now, when you first open up the box, you'll notice two components that look very similar, but they're different. One's marked transmitter, one's marked receiver, and I've got associated components sort of split between the two. The transmitter belongs where you're watching TV today. So if you've got a media center, where you've got a DVD player, or cable box, or game console, that's where all these components are gonna be located. The receiver is gonna go in the remote location, whether that be an upstairs bedroom, or downstairs, or a kid's room. All these components are gonna be located there. Now, one thing that's nice about this product, in addition to transmitting the HDMI signal to that remote location, it can also echo the IR signals, which means if you're upstairs in a bedroom and you need to change channels on the cable box, you don't want to scream down to somebody downstairs to do that. So we include components, these are IR receivers and transmitters, that plug into the box so that when you're upstairs with a remote control, you can point it at this infrared receiver and have it transmit those infrared signals along with the HDMI signal back down to that main location. So it gives you control as well as video uh, upstairs in that remote location. Included as well are little sticky tabs here where you can stick those on the components. So this one you can stick on the TV or monitor you've got in that remote location so it's easy to see that remote from there. This one gets stuck on the front of the receiver you're trying to control. So if you've got a, a TV receiver, you've got a DVD player or a TiVo box, you're going to glue this to the front of it. In addition to both the IR signals and the video signals, we also transmit RS-232 signals. So we've included connectors here, and I'll explain that in a minute, that plug in the back where you can hardwire them to those. The cases, you'll notice immediately, are made out of metal. Now we do that on purpose because having a metal case means it's gonna be more durable, and more importantly, it's gonna reduce the amount of interference that comes in from the outside. Components in here are fairly sensitive. If it's a plastic case, you'll get a lot of inf interference from the outside, and that won't give you the perfect picture upstairs that you want. So having a metal case like this means you're gonna get the best possible image quality, crystal clear imaging being transmitted upstairs. In addition to that, we include brackets, because you can mount this inside a component, like if you've got a stereo cabinet and you want to bolt it to the side or to a wall, it's your option to do that, but we include brackets to do that. We include a full owner's manual as well. Now this is important because it explains all the connections you're going to need to make. There's a couple of options of how you connect this up. It also explains the specifications as far as what type of video signal and audio signal uh, this will transmit, what kind of quality you can expect from it. It's a 1080p supported device, so it's going to give you a beautiful picture upstairs. The last thing I'll talk about is the power supply. Now you may be wondering why you've got two active components in one single power supply. The last little bit of magic we built into this product is it supports PoE, which is power over ethernet, which means once I plug in one of these units and make that CAT5E or CAT6 connection between it, the power for that second unit actually rides over that cable. So you only need to plug this in either at the transmitter side or at the receiver side, and it's gonna provide plenty of power for both of these units operating. So it's not like you have to worry about a second power supply to light this thing up. It'll work just fine over a single power supply. Now, that's the basic overview of what comes with the kit. Again, it's a very simple system to hook up, but there's a lot of flexibility built into it to accommodate a bunch of different situations in your home. So now I'll take a closer look at the components because they are slightly different between the transmitter receiver and explain exactly how those connections are made. Several of the key features the EX500 IR provides include the extension of an HDMI signal up to 150 meters, full support of an HD 1080p video signal, the flexibility of using CAT5E or CAT6 cabling with the system, the ability to extend your IR signal between locations so you can easily use a remote control at your second location, and finally, a local playback feature that allows you to still watch your content at your primary location. Now we'll take a closer look at the individual components included in the kit, and I'll start with the transmitter and the receiver. Now even though they look similar, they're different in function, and it's easy to tell them apart because one is labeled transmitter, the other is labeled receiver. I'll start with the transmitter. On the front of the unit, you've got a power indicator over here that lets you know that you've got clean power to the unit and then it's up and functioning. On the bottom, You've got venting holes as well as on both sides. That's to allow any excess heat that builds up inside the unit to escape. 
You've got mounting holes on either side for the brackets that are included in the kit, and you can attach these by using the screws that are in the kit as well, and then mount this to the side of a media cabinet or on a wall near your equipment. On the back of the unit, I've got a 24 volt DC input port, and that's used with the power supply that's included. Now, interestingly, the power supply has a locking collar on it, so once you plug it in, you can actually crank down on that collar to make sure that it's not going to back itself out. That's really a nice feature, is that you're sure you have power and it's, it's securely tightened inside that port. Next to it, you've got your LAN connection. This is the connection you'll make to the receiver. That's the only connection you'll make between these two units. And again, that's a CAT5E or CAT6 cable. This is your HDMI input, HDMI output. Here's where the infrared remote extenders plug in. And you'll see that you get two of these. So you'll have one for the transmitter and one for the receiver. So in this case, the transmitter gets the smaller one. It would plug here in the IR out right there. And then you would attach this to the front of whatever device it is you're trying to control. This one would go with the receiver, and I'll explain that in a minute. The last connection over here is an RS-232 connection, and I mentioned before that we can extend RS-232 connections. A lot of home automation and control systems use those, and we include a plug that plugs in there. The plug itself has screws on the top, so you can strip the wires, slide them in, and crank down on those screws to hold those wires in place. and makes it easy to connect up and disconnect it if needed. You also get two little white 3M sticky tapes to be used with the infrared receiver. So you've got a large one for this guy, you've got a small one for this guy, and that's used to adhere those to the front of the TV or tier component. Now we'll take a look at the receiver. Connections are a little bit different on this one. So again, power connection on the front, plenty of venting on the bottom and both sides, same bracketing holes I mentioned a minute ago, but there's less connections on the back. So on the back, you've got again, an optional 24 volt power supply because that power supply will over power over ethernet will power up both of these units so you can plug that in at the receiver end or the transmitter and it works just as well. You can also connect up that cable I talked about in a minute ago here so that LAN connection between the two units let me show you how this goes the connection here between these two units is that cat 5e or cat 6 that I mentioned this is HDMI out you've got infrared in infrared out here so in this case on the receiver end you would have the infrared in which is this one right here the larger connection right there which would plug on the in. So on this one, it's on the out. On this one, it's on the in. And again, you've got the RS-232 connection on the end. Now, the reason these are a little bit different is because if you think about it, on the transmitter end, on this guy's end, this is where your media equipment is located today. So if you're gonna unplug an HDMI cable from your TV or your widescreen, and you're gonna plug it into here, right? And you're gonna push that signal to the receiver, you still wanna be able to watch the TV at this location. So that's why we give you an HDMI out connection here. So you'll connect a short cable from this to your media center. And then what you'll see is that the unit itself will actually allow you to watch the programming at your primary location with this unit. So it's called a loopback, where it doesn't really interfere with you viewing that content, but it's also sending that content to the secondary location. So that's a nice little additional feature we've built into it. It also makes it easier for you and doesn't require you to use a switch like a lot of other systems on the market. So that's pretty much it for the close-ups. Um, now we'll move on and I'll show you how to do the connections to actually get this working in your home. Now I'll show you the connections you'll need to make to get the EX500 IR working with your gear at home. We'll start with the transmitter. The transmitter side is going to be located where your media center is right now. So if that's in your rec room, your den, wherever you're watching TV today is where the transmitter is going to end up. That remote room in your home where you want to watch that content is where the receiver is going to get set up. Now to connect up the transmitter side, you've got an HDMI cable connected to your monitor ready. I'm using a little media player over here as sort of our source. I'm going to disconnect from the monitor. I'll take that HDMI connection and I'll make the connection on the back of the product HDMI in. Then I'll take a second HDMI cable because it's a loopback product which means I can still watch the content in my media area and I'll connect it up in the back and then connect this up to the HDMI out on this product. Now you'll notice there is no video at this point because it hasn't been powered up. The next thing you'll need to do is to power up the unit and you can use the 24 volt power supply that comes with it. You'll make a connection in the back tighten that up. Now you'll notice immediately the power light comes on. It's going to take a couple of seconds for the unit to determine that it's got a valid HDMI signal, then pass that signal through to the monitor. So I think it's about a 15 second delay, and there you go. So now we're looking at the same media content as before. In the remote location, I've got an HDMI cable on the TV I want to watch this on up in the bedroom. I'll connect that to the HDMI out on the back of this guy. Now again, I don't need to power this one up separately. 
but I do need to make a connection between the two. So on the back, I showed you that Cat 5E and Cat 6 connection. That's where you'll run the cable between these two units. Now, nothing connects these two except for that cable. I'm going to simulate that with a short cable, but you can use up to a 150 meter long cable, which is pretty impressive. And you'll basically connect it to the transmitter, connect it to the receiver. Now, notice again, once I do that, the receiver will come on immediately. This is going to go blank for a second. It's going to reconfigure, knowing that it's now got a partner upstairs. It's going to come back on here, and it'll come back on here as well. And again, about a 15-second reset to get it to the secondary location. So we've come back on the primary, now we've come back on the secondary, and you're good to go. Now, the nice thing about this is in addition to being able to watch that content at a remote location, you can actually control what's going on at the primary location by using these IR extenders. So I'd mentioned before about those two infrared dongles that you can plug into the back. On this end, you're going to plug in the IR in, and on this end, you're going to plug the IR out. And on this one, you're going to plug it into the back, and then that small piece right here is going to go right to the front of this unit. And what's technically happening is this one's picking up the infrared remote controls from your bedroom, and it's transmitting those through the wire along with the video signal to the transmitter down this end, which is going to relay it to that device on the end. So let me just play some video on here, and this is just going to be some footage that we shot locally with a drone. Give me one second here. And you'll see that it'll play in both. Now what's interesting is it'll actually start playing and it's a little bit delayed over here. So when I fast forward it over here, it takes a couple of seconds to make the trip up to the bedroom, but you won't notice the difference when you're upstairs watching it. So this is a perfect solution for you to extend any HDMI signal between two remote rooms in your home up to 150 meters away over a simple Cat 5E or Cat 6 cable. So hopefully that explains how to hook it up. If you have any questions at all, Stay tuned for the next section and we'll give you an idea of how to get in contact with us. I hope this overview has been helpful in understanding the many benefits of the EX500IR HDMI extension kit. This product was designed to provide a quick and easy way of extending an HDMI signal up to 150 meters at a full 1080p quality. If we've missed anything or you have further questions, please check the FAQ on our website or use the Contact Us link to send us a note and we'll respond as quickly as we can. Thanks a lot for watching.